Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Uh, I've got a question from this fella named Yugi Crow, and he was asking about tile sets. Um, I don't think he really had a specific question, I think he was just asking in general, how do you mess with tile sets in this game? Um, so I'm going to show you from the first step to the last step everything that you'll need to do. Um, real quick, just going to show you here on my desktop, I've got a file, um, a tile set that I've previously downloaded, so uh, if you're following along on your screen, you're, you're going to want to make sure you already have a tile set that you're ready to use and upload into the game. Um, so the first things first, uh, we're going to go here to the material base and uh, select graphics slash tile sets and uh, this very top one is the one that I've already uploaded for this game um, the ones that have a blue icon are the ones that are there by default so pretty much on yours you're gonna have nothing but blue icons um, to add a new one you're going to click on import find your file in which case mine's on the desktop I'm going to select my tile set and press open uh, once you've done that, you'll see you'll get this here, this orange dot, and it'll show you that it's it's there. You can preview it too if you would like. Um, this tile set that I'm using is a combination of all of the default RPG Maker XP tile sets. Um, so basically, whereas in most maps you can only select one tile set, um, like inside of a town, inside of a church, something like that, this one combines them all together, so you can just have one handy tile set to use. Um, and personally I like it. I don't, uh, if you google for it you can probably find it. Um, I believe it's called Superior Tile Set or Mega Tile Set so you can just google that for RPG Maker XP. Um, if a bunch of people watch this video you can't find it, you have trouble, just let me know. I'll upload it somewhere. I'm sure the person who made it wouldn't mind. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, once you have it uploaded into the material base you're done as far as that's concerned so you can close out of that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go to the database and to your tile sets uh, tab at the top and uh, just to kind of show you I'm gonna make a brand new tile set here so we can we can just start from scratch so I'm changing my maximum to 52 and now you'll see we have a completely blank template to work with um, I'm gonna name this test for the video and uh, we'll go ahead and continue uh, the first thing you want to look at here is the tile set graphic and this is the main part of this screen um, it's going to be where you select your tile set. Uh, the only thing about it is you can only select tile sets that you've previously uploaded into your material base, but fortunately, I got gotcha. you. We've already done that. Excellent. So we'll move on. Click this, click your tile set, and if it's formatted properly, if the person who made the tile set didn't absolutely just fuck it up, it should work. Uh, you should see it here. You should be able to click on it, um, and it should look great. So you should press OK. Um, to check to make sure it's working, if you look here in the screen that just popped up, uh, if everything is sectioned off properly, uh, for example, the you know the plants, the little single tile um, icons are, are you know they're not separated down the middle or anything. So you'll be able to click it and put the whole stump there instead of pieces of it. Um, that's only that only holds true for uh, these tiles that just have like single. Uh, single tile icons, um, but of course, like things like these trees, you have to use a big block, um, like four by five or five by four, or whatever. Um, anyway, moving on. Uh, that's just the way you can tell. Um, the next thing here is the auto tile graphics. Um, an auto tile is something that when you, or is a tile that once you put it together uh, and you add the same tile either next to it, above it, below it, just basically if you use the same tile all around itself it just automatically connects and looks nice. So for example ceilings, um, walls, uh, some walls anyway are auto tiles, um, pathways can be auto tiles, um, waterways, things like that. Um, so basically just to add one of those you just click on it and it, it gives you uh, which auto tiles you want to add into your map. So if you wanted to use road or road 2, you just press OK and it'll automatically insert that into your tile set without messing it up. Um, it gives you uh, quite a few slots here to mess with, so uh, you can add as many or as few as you want. Uh, personally, they're I, I think they're pretty handy, um, so I would definitely recommend using them for, for your game. Um, Moving on, we have the panorama graphic here, and we'll just take a look at some of the default ones. Um, basically what this is, is if you have blank parts of your map, just um, parts you haven't filled in with any kind of tile or anything, this is going to be what it shows behind it. So for example, this mountains one, um, if you had a tiny map with a little ledge on it, and 
all around the ledge is just blank because you can't walk off of it unless you are playing a game where you just suicide all the time or something. I mean, um, you would use this so all the space in the blank part of your map is uh, your panorama. It's your background. Um, it's really nice. adds a lot of depth. Um, you can find custom panoramas, uh, which, you know, really, like I said, just improve the depth of your game, makes your maps look fantastic. Um, so I would definitely recommend using these uh, when you can. Uh, the next thing here is the fog graphic. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It'll overlay a fog over your entire map. So, for example, if you're in a forest, um, these are like kind of leafy tree-looking fog, um, sandstorm fog, water, things like that. Uh, pretty straightforward. And the battle back is what your background will look like when you are fighting. So when you enter a battle, uh, this is the map that you will be located on uh, when using this tile set. Um, now, what's tricky about this is that, personally, I'm using the superior tile set, which uses all of these. Um, so you can look around in RPG Maker. There should be an option to change the current panorama. Um, if not, you can just make multiple tile sets that are exactly the same. They're all identical, except you change the battle back depending on where these fights are going to occur. Um, there's lots of ways you can do that. It's really not tough. Just kind of tinker around with it, and you should be good. Okay, so now... Uh, now that we've got through this left side of the map, we'll go ahead and continue here. Um, the first thing we're going to look at here is the Passage button. And you'll notice you can click all of these to edit your tile set. Um, we're just going to start at the top and work our way down. Um, the very first one here is very simple. Um, it's, your, it's your passage. Um, you either are going, when you click, you're going to have a circle, an X, or a square. Uh, squares are for auto tiles. Um, they're they're kind of weird. If you want to take a closer look at how those work, just click the question mark here and then click on passage, and it'll it'll explain a little more in depth how the squares work. But really, all you need to know about passage is if it's a circle, you can walk over it. If it's an X, you can't. So um, when you upload a tile set, um, unlike the uh, these other tile sets, like over here, ones that are pre-made in default, um, they're already set. It sets the passages, so you can't walk through these rocks, these stone pillars. Um, but when you upload one, like ours here, everything is passable. So you got to make sure that you add the, or that you go through and properly change these, so that, um, so you know, so that you're not just walking through trees and shit like that. Um, so that's pretty simple. You have a circle if you want to walk through it, an X if you don't and a square if it's an auto tile, which you can see here. Um, the next thing we're going to look at here is the Passage for Directions button. Now, this is basically the same thing, except it determines which directions you can access the tile from. Um, for example, if we're taking a look at this stump here and we took off the bottom arrow, that would mean from, from the bottom of that tile you could not walk up into it. Um, however, uh, or well, not however, that's just how it works. Um, if you do it from the left, it would be the same thing. Uh, so for on on the stump here, you could only enter it from the right or the top. Um, so that's kind of uh, when you upload new tile sets, it can be kind of a pain, um, simply because you you do have to go through, and especially on one like this, you have to go through the entire thing and just set all of them. I mean, that's that's a lot of work, and it's a lot of reason why um, people opt to not use custom tile sets is just because it's a huge pain in the ass, uh, but worth it, you know, especially if uh, if you won't, don't feel like switching tile sets every 10 seconds, you can just have it all in one, and once you do it one time, that's all you're ever going to need to do. Uh, so I would definitely recommend it. Now the priority, um, you can set, as you can see here, a numbered priority. And I believe the higher the number is, the obviously the higher priority it is, and the closer to the foreground it is. Um, so as an example, um, the, the higher up it is, the more chance, quote-unquote, that you're going to be able to walk behind it, essentially. Um, so the higher up you set your priority, it's going to make your character be able to walk behind it instead of on top of it. So the higher up you drive the priority, the closer to the screen it's going to be, and you can kind of use that with your characters to determine whether they're walking behind it or in front of it. Um, for example, here on this tree, you would set a high priority on these so that when you walk through it, you're behind the tree instead of in front of it. Um, Otherwise, if you just left it like this, when you walk over the tree, you're going to be walking on top of the leaves, and it's just going to kind of look crappy. Um, the bush flag is just a simple you click or no click. Um, when you click it, it's going to make the bottom, I think, 12 pixels uh, 
it's it's going to make them transparent so it looks like your feet are in the grass. Um, it's just kind of a small uh, small little option to add a little bit more depth to your game. Um, the counter flag, oh, let's make sure I don't mess this one up. We're going to use the help button. Uh, here's a nifty tutorial for absolutely anything in RPG Maker. If you click the question mark and click on something, it will teach you how to use it uh, for the most part. Um, oh, yes, the counter flag. Okay, so uh, if you have a counter flag set, um, essentially what's going to happen is that you can activate events with tiles even if you're not actually on the event that you're supposed to be. It basically just counts up for you. Um, so that one's a little bit complicated. I would definitely recommend using the question mark and checking it out and kind of educating yourself on that because it's uh, it's it's pretty hefty. Um, definitely something to look at though. Uh, and Finally we have the terrain flag once again using the question mark as you can see. Um, this is just the terrain flags have no use really um, innately rather they don't have any use but you can use the call variable command to uh, mess around with them and change things uh, so really what your your main concerns are going to be the passage the passage for directions and the priority so uh, there you have it once you've done that once you've gone through all of these options and set everything uh, your tile set will be ready to use and you should be able to uh, should be able to go um, if you have any problems as far as like uploading your tile set or when you upload it, it looks funny or you know is weird like you can't uh, whoops uh, like if you pick something if you have to pick more than one tile for like a stump or something like that and it's supposed to be a singular tile, then usually what happened is that the uploader just messed it up they didn't they didn't section off the tiles properly. Um, when they created it. So generally that's going to be a problem with your actual file and not so much with the program itself. Um, so that's that. I hope that helped you. I hope you learned something from that. And uh, if you have any questions, as always, send me an email. Um, I get a lot of comments with a lot of questions in them. And uh, most of the, most of, for the most part, I don't answer comments um, just because there's a million of them. And uh, it's a lot a lot easier to stay organized when uh, they're in a message. So I would highly recommend if you want a video, if you have a question or something you need to see to, uh, to learn, or if you just need a little help, uh, definitely message me instead of commenting. Uh, comments are all, always welcome, absolutely. I love getting comments on the videos, um, but if you actually want your question answered and to have a little bit of help, um, then yeah, definitely email me because I'm more than happy to help you out. So, uh, like I said, hope you learned something, and uh, see you next time. Enjoy, Yugi Crow.